Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 12. In this tutorial, we'll talk about something very useful in ADS called polymorphism or as some people call it, dynamic model selection. Now let's take a look at what we have been doing in past few labs uh, in terms of various tutorials. So if you recall, uh, we started our design uh, with a simple ideal schematic. We then turned our attention to how to use vendor library components, and then we found out how can we nearly replicate the same behavior using the basic components within ADS. Now, while we are doing this, um, imagine in our ADS main workspace, we now have three designs. And if we have to you know, sweep these models or swap these models, uh, we now have a pretty ugly looking schematic and we have to enable and disable, you know, one or the other, um, you know, sub circuits in order to see the suitable response. Now, there's a better way of handling these kind of situations in ADS and that's called polymorphism. So let's understand how we go about it. So imagine we have a test bench my filter and we have three sub circuits uh, which we are using on this test bench. Now each cell uh, which is being used as sub-circuit has its own schematic view as well as symbol view. Now symbol for all of them is same because essentially they are all the same circuit, just the implementation level is changing or the behavior is changing. Now in ADS what we could do is to manage multiple views under a single cell and that allows us to swap the different views in our test bench very, very easily. To start with, what we can do, let's uh, decide that we would like to use design one as our main cell here. So I'm going to first rename this view, which is default named as a schematic. And we'll call this a schematic underscore ideal. Now, once we rename it, um, we have uh, no impact on our design because there's only one view here. Now I'm going to copy this view from design with Q and I would just simply click on this copy view and I'm going to copy this view on the schematic to design one. And in design one, we will call it, for example, schematic underscore with Q. And now what you will notice, design one has two schematic views. Same way, we can take this Murata uh, view and we will copy that again under design one and let's call this view as underscore Murata. So now my design one cell has three views. So we can go on like this and we can have as many views as, as needed to represent various forms of our design. In your practical situation, you might be working with design work version one, version two, version three, and so on. So all of them, instead of organizing them as a different cell, you could just organize them as a different views under a single cell. In, you know, this also uh, can get extended to having a layout um, view of this, as we will see in, in future labs. It could have your electromagnetic simulation data. It could have measured data. All of those, um, you know, variants can be consolidated under a single cell. Now, once we have this, uh, let's go back to our test bench. And in this test bench, I no longer need these additional you know, sub cells. Now, within the same, um, you know, library, if we select the sub cell and if we click on this icon called choose view for simulation, it will give us all the views which are available inside our cell for simulation purpose. So let's start with simulation ideal. So you could either manually select which view you would want to use, or you can even set up an hierarchy policy which can determine which you which view you would like to use under what condition and so on. So I'm not going into hierarchy policy at this moment, but we'll just show you how to do it manually. So we'll select a schematic with ideal. We will run a simulation and notice while we are running simulation, the view name under the same sub bench is now schematic underscore ideal. And this is the response, which obviously doesn't change. So let's put the history on. And now let's go ahead and invoke another view, let's say with Q. And now notice the name changes to schematic with Q. And if you push in, it really shows you what view you have selected. And here you can see we are using the components with Q factor. 
So let's go ahead and run the simulation. And similarly, uh, next time we will go ahead and use Murata. And you can see the note, you know, uh, the change as we would expect. And now we are referring to Murata schematic and we have the same performance or the same kind of graph like we were getting earlier. So if you push in just for verification, we are indeed using Murata components for our design. Well, hopefully this um, you know, technique will be very useful for your design work and you would like to use it as much as possible to keep your test benches you know, clutter free and very neatly and cleanly organized. Well, that's your five minutes in learning about how to use polymorphism in ADS. Wish you all the best for your design and thanks for watching the video.